Hi, I'm Dr. Mitch Fleischer, Executive Director of Wellness of HowToConnect.com. I'm a board-certified family physician with over 30 years of experience practicing the gentler art and science of integrative medicine. In my holistic medical practice, I specialize in classical homeopathy, nutritional and botanical medicine, and chelation and biooxidative therapy. I was educated at Stanford University School of Medicine and began my studies of homeopathy and nutritional therapy in 1975. Today, I'm going to present our webinar, The Truth About Cholesterol and the True Cause of Atherosclerosis. I will be taking questions at the end, so please hold them until then. For those of you watching the playback on the site, please feel free to submit a question to the Wellness FAQ part of the website. Okay, let's get started. Okay, so let's begin with an explanation of what cholesterol is. Cholesterol is an essential nutrient in the human body. In fact, all the cells of the body, and we have about 50 trillion cells, if you can imagine that number in the body, the outside membrane or wall of these cells is made, 50% of it is made of cholesterol because it holds the cells together. It allows everything else in the cell to be in intact. Cholesterol also is the backbone from which the hormones from your adrenal glands, the glands on top of your kidney, are made. Uh, like the hormones that control sugar metabolism in the body, that control your salt and water balance, that control inflammation in your immune system are all made out of cholesterol. These are called the steroid hormones. And without enough cholesterol, you would become what we call adrenal fatigued. And in fact, whenever the body is under stress, whether it's physical, emotional, or mental stress, our adrenal glands send a signal to the liver to make more cholesterol so that it can make more of the adrenal hormones so you can deal with the stress. If we artificially lower those cholesterol levels, you can send yourself into adrenal fatigue with all sorts of problems of exhaustion, not being able to handle sugar well, not being able to handle stress or and your immune system being down, and you don't want that to happen. Cholesterol is not the cause, and I want to get this very clear, it is not the cause of atherosclerosis, hardening of the arteries. Cholesterol is actually a critical and part of the ability of the body to prevent hardening of the arteries. The true cause of atherosclerosis, and atherosclerosis is the fancy medical word meaning hardening of the arteries, is what's called free radical oxidative stress damage. Now, what is that? Free radicals, for those of you who don't know it, simply means highly reactive molecules. Like if you take a piece of iron and you put it outside in the, in the sunshine and the rain and all the rest of that, what happens is the heat and the light cause the oxygen to react with the iron and rust it. So essentially what's happening, when you have free radical oxidative stress damage occurring in your body, your body is actually rusting. And what happens when you have a diet that's deficient in the kind of nutrients called antioxidants that prevent free radicals from becoming an excess, like say when you have a diet that's um, mostly eating French fries and pizza and a lot of sugar and eating a lot of fried fatty foods and not take, eating enough fruits and vegetables uh, or smoking or drinking too much alcohol, all those kind of things can potentially increase the amount of free radical damage in your body. Also, we're exposed to air pollution and water pollution, pollution in our foods, all the different chemicals that are on foods. We're all exposed to stress in our slightly crazy society, poor sleep, microwave foods. There's so many different causes of potential oxidative stress damage or rusting that can occur of your body. Now, what actually happens, the process that actually occurs that results in the hardening the arteries is the first step is the free radicals that are floating around your bloodstream 
actually can create a chemical burn in the lining of your blood vessels. The lining of your blood vessels is this like Teflon surface that's called the intima. And what happens anywhere in the body where there's a lot of curves of the blood vessels, like say in your neck and your heart and, and the groin area, where there's a lot of turbulence of blood flow, that's where you'll have the most injury occurring because the blood is hitting the walls of the artery. And if there's a lot of free radicals, reactive molecules there, it will create a chemical burn of the lining of the blood vessels. Now the body tries to heal that chemical burn just as if you had an abrasion or a cut on your skin. The body tries to create like a wet scab inside your blood vessel. The first thing that happens when you have this burn is the, the body has, the bloodstream has these special little cells called platelets. And platelets are the first thing that starts creating a clot to try to heal uh, a wound. And the platelets have certain properties. They have what the term, the, the uh, technical term is chemokines and cytokines. That means something that will attract certain chemicals to the site of injury and something that will attract cells to the site of injury that are all involved in the healing process. So the first thing that happens is that you have platelets stick to the area of the burn, of this free radical burn in the inside uh, lining of the blood vessels. The next thing that happens is inside your bloodstream, you have a very large protein molecule called fibrinogen. And fibrinogen, what it does when it's activated by any sort of stress or wound inside uh, of the bloodstream, will become this substance called fibrin, which is like a cobweb. So the, fi the fibrinogen is activated and you have this cobweb of protein that forms over the wound. And that's, so it's sealing it in, it's trying to seal it in. The next step that happens is that you have uh, the trapping of more cells and platelets on area with that sort of cobweb over the wound. Then you have another process that goes on that's very important to understand, and this is where cholesterol comes in. The free radicals that are floating around the bloodstream not only injure the lining of the blood vessels, but injure the other elements floating in the blood itself. And one of the things that floats in the blood are the carrier molecules for cholesterol. This is what you've heard, uh, you've heard of the HDL particles and the LDL particles. Maybe your doctors told you about this, you've read articles about it. And simply what this means is the LDL particle means low density lipoprotein. And what the LDL particle is, is it carry, it's a little bit of protein with a big chunk of cholesterol and a big chunk of triglycerides, that's fatty acids, and it's being shuttled from the liver, where most of the LDL cholesterol is made, to all the cells in the body, to the fat cells, to the muscle cells, to the adrenal glands, where it's used, where the cells use it and incorporate it into the cell, into the membrane or into the hormones, and to use it, it's very functional. When they float downstream, and this LDL particle comes close to an area of the blood vessel that's been injured, it's chemically attracted to it and sticks to it. And this sort of waxy, rusted, rancid cholesterol gloms on there. And the next step that happens is the platelets, remember I told you, the platelets send out these chemicals, so-called cytokines, that attract cells to the area of injury to help in the healing process. One of the cells that's attracted to the injured lining of the blood vessel are called macrophages, which just means big eater. And they come and they see the damaged oxidized waxy cholesterol and they start gobbling it up as abnormal to try to get rid of it. And they get so full, they become what are called foam cells and they die. So you have these big white blood cells full of oxidized cholesterol that just glom like gooey stuff to the lining of the blood vessels. That, be that becomes part of what we call the arterial plaque. That's what doctors call plaque that is the um, atherosclerotic process or hardening the artery process uh, that it really is a, um, one in which the, the body's trying to heal itself, but if it goes unchecked, it can get worse and worse and worse, and I'll explain what happens in a moment. The body tries to wall off this building up process of, of the platelets and the fibrin cobweb and the oxidized cholesterol and the foam cells. It tries to wall it off because it's, it's a chronic inflammation with a layer of calcium. 
In fact, the body often does this whenever there's any sort of inflammation of the body. And this is like, for example, if someone has tuberculosis, uh, on x-rays, it looks like a, a little round calcified circle in the body and doc doctors know, oh, that means that someone was exposed to some somewhat infection in the lungs and they have what's called a granuloma. That's because this is called a granulomatous process. All that means is when there's an inflammation, the body tries to block it off and protect the rest of the body by putting a layer of calcium there. So you have the platelets, the, the fibrin cobweb, protein cobweb, the uh, oxidized cholesterol, the foam cells, and then the calcium plaque. Now, if you are continually exposed to free radical oxidative stress, if you continue to be rusted by your diet, by smoking, by eating poorly, by stress, what have you, that keeps on building up, and you get layer after layer of that going on. When it reaches a certain critical thickness in the blood vessel, about 40 to 50 percent, then you've got some real problems because it starts blocking the flow of blood past that plaque. And you create turbulence that can sometimes, depending on the amount of stress you're under and the way you're eating or how much you're smoking, lead to a sudden blood clot. And then it blocks off flow and you have no blood, no oxygen, no nutrients going to the tissues downstream. And that is what's caused is the basic cause of a heart attack, the basic cause of a stroke. It also can cause the blockage of blood, loss of circulation to your limbs, and it can lead to the loss of limbs due to uh, gangrene. Those are the kind of things that can be the result of this whole process of hardening the arteries, of atherosclerosis, that again is not due to cholesterol in and of itself. When cholesterol again is in its reduced normal state, it is a critically important nutrient for our hormonal system and for our, all of our cells to remain healthy. So if we artificially lower the cholesterol, what happens? Well, first of all, I want to let everybody understand that there's this, there's this drug on the market, or a whole class of drugs called the statins. The statin drugs, what they do is to artificially lower cholesterol by blocking a whole enzyme system, mostly in the liver, but every cell in the body can do that, that actually leads to the formation of cholesterol. There are certain fatty acids that are the building blocks, building blocks of cholesterol, and there's a big fancy enzyme called HMZ coenzyme reductase A that builds it up, mavalinic acid, through several steps into the cholesterol molecule. And that's controlled by several mechanisms. The, the adrenal glands tell us when to, uh, to create more of it. Uh, different cells in the body say we need more cholesterol, and it sends signals to the liver, and it makes more. And the cells themselves can make it when they need it. Again, cholesterol being a very important nutrient. What happens when you block the formation of cholesterol artificially, that same pathway chemical pathway that leads to the formation of cholesterol also is important for the production of other very, very important nutrients in the body, one of which is called CoQ10, coenzyme Q10, other names are ubiquinone, ubiquinol, you may have heard of this nutrient before, it's been in big news, they found that it's uh, very important for uh, treating Parkinsonism and a variety of other illnesses. CoQ10 is one of the most important nutrients in the human body for several reasons. One, it's one of the most important nutrients to allow our cells to cr generate the energy we need to stay alive. Inside every single cell in our body, there are these little, little cells called, uh, called mitochondria. And mitochondria are like the battery of our cells. You know, as on a cell, it might have an average of 1,000 to 2,500 of these things. And that's where sugar, in the form of glucose, and fats, in the form of fatty acids, are actually burned and turned into what's called ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is the coin of, of energy of life. That's where all the chemical reactions in the body, uh, they rely upon ATP in order to run. Without that, nothing runs, right? When, when you don't have enough CoQ10, it doesn't allow the mitochondria to produce the energy with oxygen to, to create enough of the ATP so that the cells can run. 
And it's a well-known fact when people are taking the statin drugs for a, a certain period of time, when the CoQ10 levels go down, the very first system is, symptom is you get really bad back eggs, uh, your muscles hurt, you're tired a lot. And then what can happen is the muscles can knock in enough energy and they begin breaking down. And you can get inflammation of the muscles and it can also happen to the heart muscle. The heart muscle is just like any other muscle in the body, it uses a lot of energy and it uses a lot of CoQ10. And if statins are blocking the production of the, this very vitally important nutrient, the heart become, begins to swell, your blood vessels begin to tighten up to try to support it, and you get all the problems that you're trying to prevent with the statins. You actually wind up getting heart failure, you wind up getting high blood pressure, you wind up getting cardiovascular disease as a result of taking these drugs that are blocking the production of very important nutrient. So it's not a good idea. There are much better ways to address and prevent and reverse atherosclerosis. Rather than taking drugs that block the production of a critically important nutrient, that is not the cause of hardening of the arteries. The first is just basic dietary intervention. For example, your diet should include at least five servings of fruits and vegetables a day. Even the FDA says that. We know that. Why? Because fresh fruits and vegetables, particularly organic ones, are rich in antioxidants. The very substances that will block the free radicals that are damaging the lining of the blood vessel are damaging the LDL particles to begin with. If we eliminate those and suppress the free radicals, that's going to decrease the amount of hardening of the arteries. In addition, you want to avoid eating a lot of foods that are rich in fructose. Fructose is a, a five-carbon sugar, and you, whenever you read the side of a can of, of, uh, of soda and it says high fructose corn syrup or anything with corn syrup, that's a no-no. That's definitely something that's going to read, lead to free radical uh, oxidative stress, and it's going to damage the lining of your blood vessels and contributes to hardening the arteries, diabetes, cancer, a whole range of problems. So again, dietary intervention is eating a lot of fruits and vegetables, avoiding a lot of sugars, especially fructose, avoiding fried fatty foods. Why? When we cook with oils, usually the temperature of cooking is of over 300 to 400 degrees. When you put like say peanut oil or safo oil or canola oil into a, a, a pot or a pan and you heat it up, it's just not sitting there. It reacts with oxygen in the air and it becomes what it's called, the term is called a lipoxide or a fat acid oxide. It's the worst of all free radicals. And then when you eat that food, that's gonna do damage to the inner lining of your blood vessels and start that whole process we just described. So you're much better off learning how to cook without using oils. And that's something that you can learn on the holistic nutrition part of the website. They're going to be talking about how to, how to cook properly so you don't increase free radical stress and damage your tissues. <laughs>